Hey guys, welcome to another lecture. In this lecture, we will start with some basic terminology and then we'll proceed to learn about Zookeeper and start designing our first distributed algorithm. So let's start with learning two very basic and common terms in distributed systems. The first one is a node. A node is simply a process running on its dedicated machine as part of a distributed system. This term originally comes from graph theory. In our case, when two nodes have an edge between them, that means that those two processes can communicate with each other through the network. The second term is a cluster. A cluster is nothing more than a collection of nodes connected to each other. The nodes in a cluster are working on the same task and are typically running the same code. Now it's finally time for us to start designing our first distributed system from scratch which would lead us to talk about the zookeeper. Typically, when we have a very large amount of data to analyze or a complex computation to solve, we want to hand this task to a cluster of nodes. The question then is, what part of the task is going to be performed by which node? After all, the biggest benefit of a distributed system is that we can parallelize the work and let each node work independently for that common goal. We could manually distribute the work and assign each node a separate task, but that obviously would not scale. We could receive thousands of tasks per second, so we need a programmatic way to do that distribution. So instead, we could manually decide on one special node to be the leader or the master. That master node will be in charge of distributing the work and collecting the results. This is better than our first approach, but the problem with that is all nodes can fail at any time, including that master node. And in a large distributed system, failure is not a question of if, but a question of when. If our leader is not there to distribute the work or collect the results, the entire cluster is decommissioned. So that's still not good enough. The solution is to build an algorithm to allow the nodes to elect their own leader on demand and make them all watch the leader's health closely. If the master node becomes unavailable, the remaining nodes will re-elect a new leader. And later, if the old leader recovers from its failure, once it joins the cluster, it should realize that it's not a leader anymore and would join as a regular node to help with the work. That is what we want to achieve, but if we think about this architecture for a moment, picking a leader in a large group of people, each one with their own ego, is not a trivial task. Arriving to a systematic agreement on a single leader among a large group of nodes, where essentially all the nodes are identical as they are running the same code, is even a harder task. In addition, by default, each node is aware only of itself and has no knowledge about who else is part of its cluster. So we need some kind of service registry and service discovery solution. Finally, we need some kind of failure detection mechanism, as we need a way for nodes to be notified when a leader becomes unavailable, which would trigger an automatic leader re-election within the cluster. There are many algorithms that can solve all those problems, but they are complex and tedious to re-implement every single time we want to build a basic distributed system. So the solution we are going to use is an open source technology called Zookeeper. Apache Zookeeper is a high performance coordination service designed specifically for distributed systems. It is used by many companies and popular projects such as Kafka, Hadoop, HBase, and many others. It provides us with an abstraction layer that allows us to build higher level algorithms for our cluster. So what makes Zookeeper such a good solution? Zookeeper is a distributed system by itself, and by using lower level algorithms, it guarantees us high availability and reliability out of the box. In production, it typically runs as a cluster of three or more nodes. Thanks to this redundancy, we can afford to lose a Zookeeper node and still keep the system fully functional. The way we're going to use Zookeeper is instead of having our nodes communicating directly with each other to coordinate the work, they are going to communicate with the Zookeeper servers directly instead. 
On the other side of the equation, Zookeeper provides us with a very familiar and easy to use software abstraction and data model that looks a lot like a tree and is very similar to a file system. Each element in that tree or virtual file system is called a Znode. Znodes are kind of a hybrid between a file and a directory. They can store data inside, just like files, but they can also have children nodes, just like a directory. There are two types of Znodes, persistent and ephemeral. Persistent Znodes stay in between sessions. In other words, if our application disconnects from the Zookeeper and then reconnects again, a persistent Znode that was created by our application stays intact with all its children and data. An ephemeral Znode is the exact opposite. It gets deleted as soon as the application that created that Znode disconnects from the Zookeeper. We can already guess that ephemeral Znodes would be a great tool for us to identify if another node that created them went down. So now that we know the basics of Zookeeper, let's see how we can design our first distributed algorithm, the leader election. The idea is as follows. In step one, every node that connects to Zookeeper volunteers to become a leader. Each node submits its candidacy by adding a Z node that represents itself under the election parent. Since Zookeeper maintains a global order, it can name each Z node according to the order of their addition. In step two, after each node finishes creating its Z node, it would query the current children of the election parent. Notice that because of that order that Zookeeper provides us, each node when querying the children of the election parent is guaranteed to see all the Z nodes created prior to its own Z node's creation. So in step three, if the Z node that the current node created is the smallest number, it knows that it is now the leader. On the other hand, if the Z node that the current node is not the smallest, then the node knows that it is not the leader, and it is now waiting for instructions from the elected leader. This is how we break the symmetry and arrive to a global agreement on a leader node. We we'll learned a lot in this lecture, so let's quickly summarize it. We we'll learned two new terms, the node, which is a process running on a dedicated machine, and a cluster, which is a group of nodes working on the same task as a unit. We then talked about the challenges of coordinating between different nodes in a distributed system and learned the basics of Zookeeper, which is a coordination service for distributed systems. Primarily, Zookeeper provides us with a very simple abstraction similar to a tree or a file system. We talked about two types of Z nodes, the persistent and the ephemeral, and we finish with a three-step algorithm for leader election in a distributed system. In the next lecture, we'll learn how to install, start, and connect to a Zookeeper using the Java API and implement the leader election algorithm in a cluster, but we'll run it on our own computer. I hope you guys are having fun, and I will see you in the next lecture.